I, I do think cities are really starting to take up the leadership role. We're seeing places like Sydney, Vancouver taking up the, the mantle of breaking down these barriers and then stimulating and setting targets mm. to, to ensure investment. I'm Zachary Shahan, director of cleantechnica.com and president of Important Media. I'm uh, Stefan Schurich, uh, heading the climate energy department at the World Future Council. The train has left the station, if you like. I think um, even if it's in total numbers, not as impressive on a global scale as impressive it is in certain particular countries when you see the renewable energy uptake happening in certain European countries. I think uh, this trend uh, towards 100%, uh, towards a full coverage of renewable energy is irreversible. Yeah, I, I think we're completely on the same page. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, we've, we're seeing the renewable energy growth in general being is exponential in a lot of countries. It's really taking off and we're seeing, we, we're crossing, we've crossed in several places and we're crossing in other places every day the price point where solar and wind are the cheapest options. Yeah. Uh, and I'd say in most of the world now, solar and wind are the cheapest options. You know, I've got kids and I bring my kids to the kindergarten and you see the sketches, the drawings of kids, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the drawings of a house look different. Yeah. They really look differently nowadays in, in Germany, in my own yes, country. Yes, for sure. <laughs> because kids just add wind turbines in the backyard somewhere, or they just uh, um, even, even draw solar panels. And I think, you know, this, this really describes the level of transformation that we've reached. It's just, it's just normal. It's just, yeah. it's just part of the just very ordinary picture that um, kids have in mind when they draw a house. As much as we know that solar and wind create more jobs per dollar invested, we also know that the people at the head of coal companies are not necessarily the ones that are going to benefit. And the, the renewable energy revolution is a distributed energy revolution. It doesn't so easily lend itself to huge monopolies and huge uh, you know, billionaires running a few companies. But in the end, of course, it's important that the policy really um, invites those who are willing to take action um, to go for it. And that was the feed-in tariff, that was the game changer that the farmers really invested in biomass generation technologies or in wind turbines and then sort of the whole movement started to fly and then, um, you know, house owners came on board and um, other investors came on board, which is why more than 80% of all investments in renewable energy or 80% of the um, generation technologies are not belonging to the big utilities like E.ON and RWE. Quite f far from this, they really have um, chosen a course of opposing it um, as long as possible and they are only now changing and adapting their business model to become a rather, you know, a service company rather than a generation and distribution company and I think that's that's the way to go. And to be honest, um, we are at a level where I think renewables wouldn't actually need so much incentives anymore if there were a fair playing field for all energy generation technologies. But that's what we don't have. We have, of course, huge, uh, still a highly subsidized um, sector uh, that is combusting fossil resources. But I, I completely agree. I mean, I think, uh, like I said, it's not if it's going to happen, it's how fast. And uh, the political leaders can make it happen more quickly. And we've seen ec economic study after study that shows climate action is much cheaper than climate inaction. So the quicker we can transition, the more money we're going to save as a society. But the energy market is heavily regulated. And even in places where solar makes a lot of sense, for example, like Hawaii, uh, people are blocked from putting it on their roofs. People are blocked from connecting it to the grid. They try to put taxes and fees and, and whatnot to, to slow adoption. So these kind of things need to stop happening, of course. So you need to enable clean technology, not restrict it. But the wonderful thing about the and market... And that is changing now. Yeah, the wonderful thing about the market now is that the solar market doesn't depend on a single country or a single region. Right. It's, it's, it's growing so fast in Asia, South America, North America, yeah, that uh, luckily the solar companies have a lot more security because there's as one con country steps down a bit, maybe another one steps up. 
Well, that was a great conversation. Thanks. Very much. It was wonderful talk talking okay. with you. I'm sure we'll talk a lot okay. more. Uh, okay. Share I'm our sure. share sure. our ideas about terminology. Honestly, I'm a great <laughs> fan of your uh, work of oh, the Clean Technica. Thank you. A great yeah. fan of what you guys are doing as well. Doing. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much.